There are a few rifles that have become iconic must-haves in our video games, such as the M16 and the AK. But while the SCAR is younger and its list of pop culture entries fewer, over the last few years the weapon is making every effort to enter the arsenal of essential virtual firearms. But does it deserve to? We're here at the Royal Armouries talking to Jonathan Ferguson to break down a bit of the history of the SCAR, its appearances in games and movies, as well as ending with a bit of a surprise for Jonathan. So the FN SCAR is, is pretty cemented in video games now, but its its history isn't even that long. I think people can be forgiven to, to think it's a much older gun than it is with how many games it's been in. So can you take us through a sort of brief history of the SCAR? Sure, yeah. I mean, the details are not too many, at least not this side of the Atlantic. But there was a, a US, um, I guess, Department of Defense solicitation, as they call it, in late 2003. This, this was for SOCOM, Special Operations Command. So they wanted their own assault rifle to replace specifically the M4A1, which is the heavier barreled automatic ver version of the M4. They wanted to go ground up, carry over what worked from the AR, come up with something that's suited for Special Operations Forces specifically. And then by about 2008, what we know as the um, Special Operations Forces Combat Assault Rifle, I believe is its original. Yeah, what came first? Like that <laughs> full title or the acronym, did they want to call something a SCAR? And was like, how do we, how do we make that fit? Because it, it, it feels <laughs> too much like a coincidence that it has this cool name and it just happens to fit in that. This is one of those things I'd love to get hold of one of the people involved and, and ask the question, because we don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's a silly macho name. And then they retrofitted <laughs> some terms to fit. The important point to make, I suppose, is that SCAR is the program and this is just what won. Right. So there were other submissions and if you dig around, you, you can find examples. And there's a trial held uh, about which we know very little and this is what wins. And the main difference I think that, that people um, like playing games sort of know is the H and the L. So what are the main differences between sort of the two SCAR variants that we see in games so much. This is not something that FN came up with. This was built into the original solicitation for this new rifle. But wh whichever variant design was chosen from the company that submitted it, it would have to come in two flavors. The H, or heavy, is what's here on the stand. And um, if you're ever trying to identify them, look at the magazine. Hmm. If, it's, if it's a big, chunky, deep one like this, it's your 7.62 caliber H, or heavy and then slightly hidden by this arrangement here <laughs> is the much skinnier mag of the 5.56 variant, which is the light or L. So what's quite interesting is, you know, we were looking into its appearances in pop culture and the first appearances tied quite closely to just when public knowledge about the, the scar sort of became prominent. Like the first few games like sold in the secret wars, that's, you know, a pretty, obscure game that features a lot of weapons. It was in um, Battlefield 2, and at the time, uh, Battlefield was, was huge, and that, I think, was the first time that a sort of virtual spotlight was shown on this weapon. Since then, it's had, like, Rainbow Six, it's been in so many COD games. Video games latched onto it so quickly. They immediately saw something new and interesting and put it in the games so fast. And after that, just so many more games started to appear within. When we talk about um, weapons appearing in pop culture, I think some are more closely tied to cinema, some are more cl closely tied to video games. It, it's a weapon that, that is primarily video game famous, in, in, in my I'd eyes say so. at least. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's appearances in movies. I think it was like a, a background weapon for the Swiss Guard in Angels and Demons. Of all things. Yeah, and then yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I think it appeared in Inception briefly, but these, these That are... I do remember, yeah. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. But th those aren't films where there's, there's too many big firefights. The action isn't the main point. But for video games, I think, like I said, they, they latched onto this very quickly. And I think aesthetically, it's very different, especially when games sort of lean into the tan variant, which I, I was going to say, it's brown. Yeah, and that's that's, that's, that's stark contrast enough, to just just black and wood stuff that I think is is normally found in our games. And I think you know that there's there's actually very few games that have the black variant. But is the tan yeah. variant also the most sort of popular one in reality as well, or is it a case of like, well, we need it to be visually different and not lost in the sea of other black guns that we have? 
Yeah, the the fashion side of the industry, I think, is is fascinating and a bit overlooked. We tend to assume that, especially with military firearms, that it's all driven by, you know, sheer practicality and looks don't matter. Well, that's just nonsense, especially with special operations forces. And of course, everyone looks up effectively to those forces for their kit and tactics and everything else. So, in short, I think um, I think that was very important and has become weirdly one of its features, and it set the trend. Everyone's fighting in the desert at that time, or Western forces are fighting in the desert. They want something that breaks up the outline of the weapon better than just black. And yeah, now everything is almost by default available in some variation of these colors. Often they have trouble matching the colors, so each gun is about four, three or four different shades of brown. It's interesting that you mentioned the special forces aspect, because I think in um, Modern Warfare 2, it's a weapon carried by like Task Force 141, like the upper echelon of people. As it first appearances, it was sort of reserved for the special forces characters, enemies, to sort of, I think, separate them from sort of other, and other NPCs that you might have been seeing. But it's quite often a late level unlock, a weapon you get quite deep into a game. Implied sort of rarity like that in games, it, it's a little thing that taps into the sort of the special forces element of things and just makes it feel that much like more Gucci, more hard to come by, more more reserved for the important combatants, I guess. Yep, which is, of course, a, a deliberate reflection of its, its origins and its real world issue. I mean, my impression is that as time has gone on, it's become more just another option. And a lot of special forces have not gone with it. So it hasn't become the signature weapon for special forces. But equally, it's been a success. It hasn't gone away. You know, the AR and the AK still dominate, but this thing is there. It's sort of a benchmark as well. You, you, a lot of new designs. The CZ Brand 2, off the top of my head, is essentially a parallel universe scar. And I always talked about the modularity being very important when it comes to like the the production of this weapon, I like see scopes, grenade launchers. We've seen examples before with you know foregrips and laser sights and everything. And I think that was very important as games sort of built up to add more modularity as well. They had a new interesting weapon that also fit in with what they were trying to accomplish with games. Like we did a whole episode of attachments and how they gained in popularity. So it made a lot of sense that game studios are like, well, it's new, it's interesting, it's visually different, and we can throw cool stuff on it. Legitimately. Yeah, <laughs> and, and not have it sort of look out of place. Like, all of this ties together and, and looks right, especially with, you know, the grenade launcher, and games tap into that, like, you know, PUBG, getting a lot of attachments for your gun to improve it. Mid-2000s, as, as, as Call of Duty was growing, unlock more attachments, unlock more attachments, unlock more attachments, even, even Battlefield, and just allowing you to customize your firearm in, in game became like a huge, drawing point to developers and what the SCAR was doing right came at the right time in, in at least video game terms and really lent itself to games, to, to the virtual world with, with how much you can do with it and how different it is. I suppose the, the, the main thing that sort of gets lost in some of the games is that the L firing the 556. How did that compare to the to the M4 firing the, the same cartridge in, in reality? Because in games it sort of changes from game to game, but there are mm. some there are some patterns that have emerged through some games between its comparison to the M4 and the L and the H variant. That's a very interesting question with a lot of real world resonance because it's not different enough. This thing emerges into the into the public eye and as you say almost immediately into pop culture in about 2008, but very quickly the L just falls away. There are stories of unreliability and, and teething problems, as you would get with any new weapon system, if I can uh, use that term. But the only thing that, that sticks, as far as US SOCOM are concerned at least, is the Mark 17, the SCAR H. This thing is too close to an M4A1. They already had the M4A1, the Mark 18, close call to battle, receiver version as well. It, just wasn't worth sticking with for, for them. It's interesting because it sort of mirrors its life in games as well. Like in, in some games, it's basically just a replacement for the M4. It, do, it doesn't add much variety in gameplay when it's when it's limited to the to the L. When versions of the SCAR are added into a game, it's usually the H. Mm. And I think the H is getting more, more popular in games and it's the one developers will prefer because it can add variety. Recoil will be higher. Um, rate of fire will be a little slower. Obviously, um, a much smaller magazine, 
potentially higher damage with a bigger cartridge. And, you know, it might be only small adjustments to the in-game stats, but it at least feels different. And it's strange because I don't know if it's on purpose, like game developers also realizing the L isn't doing much for us in our games, whereas the H is. First-person shooters are not typically, quote-unquote, realistic, but the basic stats, as you say, of uh, equivalent accuracy, however that's depicted, rate of fire. Uh, I mean, if anything, the, the rate of fire on these is slower. So if you were to replace your M4 or Mark 18 with the equivalent Scar L, it'd be less fun to use because it's more like 650 rounds per minute, not, not 800 plus. Um, yeah, in, the real, in the real world, you, that's a good thing. You want more controllable automatic fire if you're going to have it. In games, it's just less fun. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's just, there's just not enough to differentiate it unless you start massaging your stats. The basic way in which guns are depicted in games follows reality enough that I can see that it, it is because it's too similar to an M4 in reality and in game world that it's just not doing enough. For, for me, there's a few sort of notable games that it's appeared in. Like I remember, I have fond memories of it in Battlefield 3. And it, interestingly enough, it was it was a weapon that's, that, that appeared in Battlefield first and then Call of Duty started to grab onto it. A few weapons have found their, their fame in one shooter and another's taken note. But interestingly, like the, the most current sort of fame that this weapon carries, I think weirdly is Fortnite. <laughs> And, and I'm not, yep. it's, it's, it's strange. Even it's, I am aware of this. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's strange because the Fortnite version, it's, it's like legendary rarity of the assault rifle, which replaces the M4 when you, when you upgrade it. So it's sort of weirdly mirroring reality and its aesthetics, I think, because it's very blocky, lends itself to that sort of cartoonish, Air of Fortnite, um, which is something that we can actually uh, showcase <laughs> as a little surprise. Oh, I love it when you surprise me like with this. A, <laughs> with a Nerf variant, and it's, I mean, yeah, it's weird, but like you can, you can see it. It's even got like the flip up sights, and it's just for me very bizarre that this, it's become like the poster <laughs> weapon. Of the of the game because yep. of its rarity, it's 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 an assault rifle class, so it's like probably the common most common weapon type in, in the game. I mean, obviously Fortnite has propelled it to such fame that it's now to nerf gun. Point that thing. There we go. I will hit there the camera. Yeah, <laughs> that looks Sorry, like Chris. a lot of fun. <laughs> there you go. There's a, there's a half a mag there for you. Amazing. But it is it is interesting that finger off the trigger at all times. Yeah, good discipline. It is interesting that this, you know, sort of scar badass name, it's most famous now for Fortnite. <laughs> it's, <laughs> I don't I don't think that's what um, FN Herstal really imagined. I, I'm sure it wasn't. But I bet they don't mind their guns famous for being one of the, most, the biggest video game games in the world. Probably not. I mean, the way, the way things go, it's, it's conceivable that the, even the Scar H falls out of at least SOCOM use and ends well, up Will this be the L because of the, the Curve magazine? <laughs> <laughs> you be the judge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to leave this here if you want to get a, get a little tag on it, leave it in the collection. Um, don't want it falling in the wrong hands, so. Well, not quite. It's clearly very dangerous. Uh, this is, in all seriousness, this is something that we, we've considered moving toward, but it's a case of where to start and where to stop. So we have a... We'll start a, here. <laughs> a start and stop here, maybe. No. Um, we, we have a, a good collection now of popular culture stuff, stuff that's been in movies, TV. We have yet to really represent the gun in video gaming, and we need to do that with at least one object. So it is not impossible. I could find myself doing the, uh, the paperwork <laughs> for something like this. And hey, Fortnite, what could be bigger? And the biggest Fortnite gun just so happens to be a scar, complete with the uh, legendary Ugg boot shaped buttstock. Yeah, like I said, collapsing, very similar. <laughs> That's yours now. Quite taken <laughs> with it, to be honest. <laughs> just shoot the camera. Middle finger. On that button. Oh, we have yeah. a grip safety, effectively. Yeah. We're out. We're going to go off and reload then.